You do things your own way. You make things your own, just the way you like them. Your bank should do that for you, too. The Bank of Clark is the bank for that. From banking to lending to wealth management, when you need financial services built just for you, we're the bank for that. Find out what banking design just for you is all about. Call 1-800-650-8723. Visit your local Bank of Clark branch today or go to bankofclark.bank. That's bankofclark.bank. We're the bank for that. Member FDIC. The Moon Museum. I'm Jason Horton. I'm Rebecca Lieb. And this is Ghost Town. On November 15th, 1969, a mysterious NASA engineer known only as John F., snuck a dick pic looking scribble and five other drawings into Apollo 12's lunar lander. Five days later, this tiny tile gallery, known as the Moon Museum, would land on said moon, staying in the lander and ostensibly permanently on the moon itself. One artwork in this whimsical moon museum would stand out in a bizarre way, contributing to what might be the first permanent lunar dick pic, well, that we know of, existing on the moon. Want to hear about it? Of course you do. Apollo 12 was the sixth crewed flight in the United States Apollo program and the second to land on the moon and did so successfully on November 19, 1969. It's interesting to note that when Commander Charles Pete Conrad Jr., the shortest man of the initial groups of astronauts, stepped onto the lunar surface, his first words were, quote, Whoopee! Man, that may have been a small one for Neil, but that's a long one for me. This phrase didn't come out of nowhere, though. Conrad made a $500 $500 bet with reporter Oriana Falacci that he would say these words after she had asked if NASA had scripted Neil Armstrong's famous moon landing catchphrase, quote, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Conrad, a, a play on that saying, later said he was never able to collect the money from Falacci, which is, in my opinion, disappointing. But back to dick pics. You see, the phallic scribble launched on Apollo 12 wasn't just any drawing. It was a piece of art by Andy Warhol. Warhol was one of six artists whose miniature drawings were allegedly smuggled onto the moon on the Apollo 12 mission in what was called a moon museum, a small ceramic tile three quarters by one half inch that contained original art by six prominent artists from the late 1960s, including Andy Warhol, Robert Rauschenberg, Dave Navaros, John Chamberlain, Claes Oldenburg, and Forrest Myers, the guy who organized the whole project. Robert Rauschenberg's drawing is a single, minimal line. Dave Navarro's is a black square with thin white lines intersecting it. John Chamberlain drew an original pattern. It kind of looks like a waffle. Clays Oldenburg, who was in a Mickey Mouse phase at the time, drew a geometric variation on Mickey Mouse. Forrest Myers created a computer-generated drawing, and Andy Warhol created, well, a drawing of a penis. Quote, he was being the terrible bad boy, said Forrest Myers in an interview. Warhol himself claims the doodle is merely his initials, artfully arranged. But, I mean, if you look at it, it's a penis. On that note, let's take a break. How powerful is the Cox Network? So powerful that one day, the internet will let your doctor perform miracles from thousands of miles away. Connecting to remote operating room. Giving a whole new meaning to the term house call. Operation complete. The Cox Network, with gig speeds everywhere. It's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox bringing us closer. In Cox serviceable areas, speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms apply. Other restrictions may apply. The identity of the artists in the Moon Museum was initially kept under wraps until both John Chamberlain and Clays Oldenburg confirmed through representatives that they did, in fact, contribute drawings. At the time, the, quote, Moon Museum project was widely considered the first piece of artwork to ever grace the Moon's surface and would stay there, thanks to the Moon's lack of atmosphere. But that's, of course again, still up for debate. Why? Because it's important to note that NASA never approved the artwork's intergalactic travel agenda. It was all under the table, the tile making its way from artist to engineer to lunar lander to the moon, moving in secret through those who wanted to see the Moon Museum to fruition. Forrest Myers stated that, quote, my idea was to get six great artists together and to make a tiny little museum that would be on the moon. NASA, or they, in his quote, never said no, I just couldn't get any of them to say anything. 
The initiative went forward in an almost completely undocumented way after Myers resolved to smuggle the Moon Museum on board, using back channels through very cool NASA engineers to make his art on the moon dream a reality. This, of course, makes it hard to verify the tile's existence on the moon. The only proof we have is a mysterious engineer who swore he would send Myers a telegram when the Moon Museum was covertly placed on the Apollo 12 lander. So, at 3.35 p.m. on November 12, 1969, Less than two days before Apollo 12 took off, Myers received a mysterious telegram at his house from Cape Canaveral. It was from a sender, an anonymous sender, we still don't know the actual identity of, named John F. The telegram stated, quote, you're on, A-OK, all systems go. If you have a home project that not only needs to be done, but needs to be done well, Angie's List is now Angie, your home for everything home. With over 20 years of experience in everything from leaky faucets to a complete kitchen renovation, Angie helps make your home improvement projects easy from start to finish. Between recording this podcast, creating my YouTube videos, and trying to fit in quality time with my family, sometimes I need a little help around the house too. That's where Angie comes in. With just a few taps on the app or clicks on the site, Angie can tackle any home project, big or small. I can even research and connect with local pros for my specific project. And here's the best part. Angie has cost guides that tell me what others have paid for similar projects, both nationally and in my area. And I can even request quotes from multiple pros in just a few clicks. I can also see ratings and reviews and compare quotes from local pros, which helps me feel confident in my ultimate choice. If you're like me and you need some help with your long to-do list, Angie is the place to go. With Angie, homeowners are armed with choice and information making it simple to get their projects done right. Angie provides new digital tools and innovation solutions to make it easier than ever to get anything you need for your home completed. So, whether it's an emergency leak, a bathroom remodel, a snow removal this winter, download the app or head to Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. And stop putting off that home project that you've been wanting to finish for months. Again, that's Angie.com. Your home for everything home. How powerful is the Cox Network? So powerful that one day, the internet will let your doctor perform miracles from thousands of miles away. Connecting to remote operating room. Giving a whole new meaning to the term house call. Operation complete. The Cox Network. With gig speeds everywhere, it's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, bringing us closer. In Cox serviceable areas, speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms apply. Other restrictions may apply. How powerful is the Cox network? So powerful that one day, the internet will let your doctor perform miracles from thousands of miles away. Connecting to remote operating room. Giving a whole new meaning to the term house call. Operation complete. The Cox network. With gig speeds everywhere, it's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, bringing us closer. In Cox serviceable areas, speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms apply. Other restrictions may apply.